okay. Well, let's look at adjusting the camera, of course. You know, it's kind of a signature thing. And I can't light my pipe anymore because I'm not smoking. I really ought to fix it. I had a cigar today, but, you know. Give me a stamp frost. This is, uh, I don't even know when it was initially published. If I look at uh, the rules, there's copyright. But there's no date. Maybe because it's German. The back doesn't seem to have a year on it, so I don't know, but I, I seem to remember when I looked on the Geek, it's a fairly early game. Um, it comes with a pile of things. First of all, the rules, the original German rules, look quite approachable, as opposed to the translation that I have, it's kind of painful and I've had a difficulty dealing with it. I guess you couldn't ask too much because somebody, you know, went through the effort of making that translation and now the damn marker, I hope it has a supposed to be non-permanent, yeah, wipes off my mic, I'm good. Uh, so, uh, the rules, it, I can't speak to the German ones, but the, uh, the translation that I picked up it kind of disturbs me a little bit just in the sense that it, it's hard to cope with more than anything else. You know, I want, I don't like printed paper from a printer. I don't like, you know, the, the wide spacing. If you've ever seen my posts, well, they look more like this <laughs> than they do like this. And, you know, this is my favoring. I like those columns and I've gotten used to them and I, you know, can't do that in a, in a bulletin board. You have a number of different maps, and I can't speak too much to many of these. These are not the maps I remember. Uh, I remember a Russian map, a German map, and there's a German map here, but it looks significantly different. Oh, that's a French map. There's a German map here, and it looks uh, significantly different from the one uh, that I'm used to, but it may be. Maybe I just forgot. An Irish map and maybe another, maybe a U.S. one, it may have been the Western U.S. only, I don't know. Anyway, it's interesting to play with different maps. Uh, they seem to be pretty high quality. Uh, you know, your crayon rails type component where you can erase things that have been in there for years and years. Uh, some of these have some additional kind of interesting little features like little uh, fairies here, and national boundaries that have different effects on things. There's also options, even for the uh, Eastern U.S. one that we played, that I didn't have in the game. That's what kind of, oh, this is the, oh no, this isn't. So you know what's kind of cool, is the Eastern U.S. and the Western U.S. almost match, but not quite. The Western is at a different scale, so even though there's cities like St. Louis and Chicago, you couldn't make some sort of Mondo game out of it, which is a pity. I would have liked to have, you know, seen, hey, what happens if I connect these maps? Or the French and German, and I assume there's the same problem there. Uh, you got your little wooden pieces, little wooden dice that feel too light for me, for their size, and a bunch of markers. Um, these markers may have been great when they first started out. Uh, I tried to resurrect them and kind of made a mess. The only problem, the brown one seems to write in green, and that's just weird, uh, especially since there is a green one. I found the crayons worked a lot better. So this is a game that, you know, when I played it, when I first saw it, and it was a different version, obviously. I played that. It's the black, uh, I don't know what company it was, but something, maybe Hans and Gluck or, Gluck or whatever, brought something over uh, to the U.S. And it was, uh, it was very attractive box-wise. This looks like, you know, your common uh, drugstore game or supermarket game that you'd find at Target or whatever. You know, your Monopolies and whatever. The box is a little different. But it definitely looks like it's targeted at a more gen general audience than, say, um, 
the game that I saw, which was in this black, kind of impressive looking Euro style box. But, and beyond that, I mean, certainly the box is actually, you know, somewhat effective because seeing this box depressed me when I saw what I got. I said, oh no, I, I wanted that pretty black box. Well, I'm okay with this. Uh, either way, it takes up a lot of space, so uh, it's, not a, it's not a great deal either way there. But as a game, I remember this pleasing me a lot more than it did in this solitaire play. It's never going to be the kind of game where you're focused in and just making all these thoughtful decisions. It's a game that has a lot of luck in it. In the race segment, uh, definitely, but even a sort of different kind of luck, which is the predicting what your opponents are going to do in the building segment. Uh, plus, if I recall correctly, you roll a die for building there, or you just get five. Who I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, you roll a die uh, for construction points each turn. And there's an option in here that everybody shares the same die or whatever. But since, you're pl since any opponent gets to roll the die and make their choice where they want to go after they roll their die, There are options that a good die roll might open up that you think are unlikely to show up at a particular time. You could also be playing off of someone expecting that they'll make an optimal move and maybe they make a suboptimal one and end up hosing you, whatever. Uh, or certainly, if you're facing it the first time, you don't know what the optimal moves are. So you make what looks like a good move to you, like Black did or Green did early in the game. And these were players who got, green especially, they were the first pick. And they got hosed by surrounding picks. It's kind of like playing the prices right, right? You know, if you're the guy who bids first, and you take about where you think the value is going to be, well, the next person might say, yeah, I think it's a little less than that. So they take a dollar less than you or a penny less than you. And somebody else says, ah, I think it's a little more. And they take a penny more than you. And you're just screwed. I mean, and that's very similar to what can happen here where you get squeezed uh, by the picks that other people make in terms of territories. I suspect that with certain numbers of players, that might not be a big issue. But certainly in six players on the U.S. board, it did turn out to be a major issue. There were attractive looking locations that were too easy to hose. And that's what Green got caught in in my game. Two though, uh, when you play something like this, one of the real charms of the game is once you get to the racing phase especially, but even in the building phase, this is very, very fast paced. Roll your dice, move your piece. Roll your dice, move your piece. Oh, buy your, buy your stuff. Roll your dice, move your piece. Roll your dice, move your piece. Um, you lose that solo. There's not this, you know, it has almost kind of a backgammon feel in terms of you're just doing things that may require some thought, that may not be purely instinctual, but you want to do them very, very quickly. You don't want to get caught up thinking in this game. And uh, sitting back and playing it solitaire, it's kind of hard to capture that feel quite as much. I don't like playing the fast-paced game solitaire anyway, even when we're talking about the CDGs or modern Euros, well, not, modern, not just modern Euros, but Euro-influenced games like Twilight Imperium, it's that fast pace that often gets in my way and says, I don't like this. But for whatever reason, some of those get in my way and I don't like them when I'm playing them even opposed. This game I really remember liking opposed. Maybe it's just because of the situation of the group I was in. I was in a group where um, there was at least one player who was very, very opposed to anything that was kind of heavy. But he really liked Euro Rails. And he would bring a pile of Euro Rails, and he would bring this in 1835 as kind of his two other alternatives to the Euro Rails games. Well, 1835 was cool, except I didn't like it. I, I thought it was the worst of the 18xx games. And we would end up.
playing that so much that this became the alternative I always wanted. And he would absolutely refuse to play just about anything that I brought, or for that matter that a couple other people would bring. Normally the rest of us would bring different games each time, uh, but he would just bring the same stuff each time. And he would be very opposed to playing new things, especially if they were a little heavy. Uh, anyway, because of that situation, maybe this achieved a certain iconic status in my mind. But I do remember kind of liking it. There's this same feeling that there is in the crayon rails, which is trying to control the roots, uh, and even more so in this. You're not going to end up hitting everything in this. You're going to have a limited port part of the board. There's this deal making where you can kind of point out, no, that guy's ahead. You don't want to help him. Let's work together and make him try to fight harder for a better pairing. Or, hey, you know, we can guarantee that person doesn't win if we work together on this race. Uh, and then there's this sort of fast pace of throwing the dice and moving around quickly. And all that worked very well for me. I can understand where a lot of the Euro gamers would like this. Which strangely I've been told is very much sort of a kind of exemplar of Euros, of the lighter Euros. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what a Euro is from whatever, because I consider kind of my exemplar was, oh, the Euros are these games with like deep thought. And, 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 and they take you far beyond kind of the Monopoly or the Crayon Rails or whatever. Well, this is definitely lighter than Crayon Rails, okay? So, uh, this is more on par, I'd say, with maybe uh, the fast food franchise that I just did recently. I can't tell you if I like this better or worse than fast food franchise. I can tell you I like it a lot better than Crayon Rails. And... For, for a game that involves, you know, drawing on the map, which can be attractive to some people. I, I know my current wife loves the idea of drawing on the map. That, you know, it allows you to express yourself fully and express your, your plans without having... And, and she's excited, actually, for the same reason about Ranger up here. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it, it, it's a combat game where you get to draw on the map and plot out your attacks. That is very attractive to her for the same reason, for whatever. Uh, for me, that mechanism isn't terribly exciting, but I do like the, I'm not necessarily limited, you know, to certain hex tiles like an XX. Um, that, that kind of doesn't please me as much. Or maybe I don't really like, you know, what the Chicago Express and the Winsome, well, not so much the Winsome, but the Chicago Express uses with, oh, I... I come out of this hex in every direction because I've got a chew in it type of feeling. That doesn't please me as much. So actually the drawing on this pleases me. Um, I probably would love for the same reason kind of the string rails idea. Uh, but this one, you know, you're not going to have, what, what you're going to lack in this that you have in the, in the Mayfair crayon rails, you're not going to have the, oh, I've got this root and I've got to figure out how to optimize the cards I've got in front of me. Or, if you're playing with bidding or whatever on the cards, I have to optimize how I can collect my set and then make it work. That's not like this. This is very much a, the probabilities are very clear and very open to you. You know what's going to happen in the game, you just don't know the order it's going to fall in. So, getting control of a certain area, you know you're going to get a certain number of your cities hitting there. Now, if you play with the base rules to this instead of the option that I played, which I think were the base rules to the game I ended up uh, playing before, if you play with the base rules to this, you have no idea what the distribution is going to be like. It, and that might be an interesting game as well. You're just playing to a certain amount of cash. And I kind of wish I had tried that because uh, that would have been a totally different experience. And I may give this another shot a little later uh, with that kind of play in mind instead of trying to keep track of this complex grid. The grid is an interesting idea, but there's just different alternatives to how you can play this game. Uh, and a lot of them are expressed in this particular set of rules. We expressed a lot, we, we came up with a number of variants to crayon rails to try to make it better. None of them, I think, terribly improved the game uh, 
one of them was Harsh Rails, which probably ruined the game, but that was kind of our, our last most decadent addition to the game. And if we hit uh, Empire Builder or one of the other Cran Rails, I'll probably go into that. Not Iron Dragon. Anyway, this is kind of a light game. Uh, it requires some thought. It requires some planning. But there's enough luck in it that you still have a chance even if you kind of fall behind a little bit. But if you fall far behind, you're screwed. If you're not in the top tier, uh, you're just, you're never going to recover. If you run out of money, you're not going to recover. The best we saw in this game, what? Did, who, did anybody fall behind and, and come back completely? Black came the closest and they ended up with 40 points, uh, you know, 80 points behind the leader. A third the score of the lead, basically. So, you might get lucky. Those cities that you've been banking on that didn't score might score or will score eventually. But because of the, uh, with the grid at least, because of the way that things interact and you don't know if, you, even without the grid, you don't know if the city that you've got that's in your territory that you've got good track to will link up nicely with something else that you connect to. If that happens, it's beautiful and that's how Black actually got from basically dead in the water up to 40 points. They got lucky with a couple of runs, but it's quite possible that they could have been stuck in runs where they had to pair up with somebody and just wouldn't have gotten anywhere near that kind of scoring. So there is a lot of luck in this uh, and I like that in a game actually and that's one of the things that I kind of favor with this. But I feel like there's more of a planning and more of a thoughtfulness than in something like fast food. And in a sense there's more real planning in this to my mind than there is in the, in the Mayfair games. The Mayfair games are all about optimizing your route, optimizing what you have in front of you, which actually feels very Euro-ish to me. You know, what are my options and how can I make bank best on that? This has that idea behind it, but it feels more strategic in nature. It feels more like you're thinking about, okay, if I put here, what are the long-term consequences of that? especially with starting position, right from the very, very beginning of this game, you have to be thinking. You certainly do in Euro Rails as well, or uh, Empire Builder. You have to be thinking, oh, how, how can I make these runs work? But that's more tactical thinking in the sense that you're, you're, you're trying to make it to the next hump. Here, you're trying to do that, but you do want to kind of carve out an area, because if you get something like Red Hat in my game, you've got a serious bonus. Anyway, I'm going to walk away from this saying, geez, I just don't know. I didn't really enjoy it, so I'm going to give it a six for now. But it could well go up if I get to play it opposed, and I will get to play it opposed with my wife. Um, and it may be even more interesting in two than it was in, say, six. Because in six, somebody, a couple players are likely to get kind of stripped out and boned. In two, it may be a good head-to-head -head competition the same way that the Mayfair games tend to be. All right, up it goes.